You know what I'm saying? Like, I never was like that. I would always listen to music. And though I, though, though I play the drums, like, the, it could be the bass guitar that intrigues me. Or, or, you know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. Most of the times it was the bass guitar. Um, but a lot of niggas wasn't like that, man. Niggas just played the drums. And I, I wanted to do more. I wanted to create the, the actual sound and create the music that we was listening to and shit like that. Create the drum. Create the music that we playing the drums to. You know what I'm saying? He over here listening to you dying laughing. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, you know? No, I'm just saying. I, I, like the, I like the ones that we getting, but I ain't gonna lie. Like, even the ring that I got you, I seen some better there. And I was just like, dang, like, did I move too fast? I asked somebody, so, I asked somebody else about us um, switching our wedding rings out. Technically, we're really not supposed to do that. Man, who cares? It's 2024, we can do what we want to do, as long as it's on the ring finger. You're right. I I'm not. A, I'm not opposed. I got gold jewelry and I got white gold jewelry. Yellow gold yeah, and white gold. I don't know. They they couldn't switch theirs out. That's the difference. <laughs> she said they couldn't switch. <laughs> like, Yo, you gotta cheat. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, who made that rule? You know what I mean? Like, no. Like what? If it's on the ring finger, nigga, this is my wedding ring. You know? But um, okay, I'm gonna let you finish your interview. I love you. I'll talk to you later. All right, I love you too, baby. What boom boom at? Okay. He's sleep. Okay. Call me okay, when bye. you wake up. Okay. Okay. I've been with Faith for 11 years, man. I started in 2011. I have a funny story about that shit. I got, I started T.I. and Faith Evans at the same time. Oh, bro. Yeah, I got called out. I got called out to do Faith. I got called out to do Faith, but while I was out doing Faith, the drummer for T.I. So Mars, my god brother Mars was in being for both. He uh, he um, uh, he he called me for faith. I went, I went out to LA rehearsing faith. We went to uh, we went to Memphis. And uh, while we was in Memphis, he got into it with the nigga that was playing drums for Tip. And he fired him like because the drummer he was just doing weird shit. Uh, doing weird shit. He fired him and he called me as one. He like yo, uh, like basically I'm switching your flight from. Memphis to back to LA to Memphis to Denver, which is where TI was. Like no rehearsal, no, no nothing. Just literally like nigga. On the way on the plane, on the way to Denver, listen to all TI music. Like that's literally how it happened. I'm like, what's the set list? Like we don't know what the set list is. TI, he don't have set list. Like whatever he's feeling, he's gonna do that night. So just listen to all TI songs. I'm like, <laughs> what? But yeah, 2011. <clears throat> so where are the rehearsals out? They weren't in Vegas. You flew out to rehearsal. I flew out. No, I didn't even fly out. This is the thing. And this is part of my story. This is part of what I tell all the musicians that I know. Like, I, they called me for faith. I was living in Vegas. And nigga, I, I had $5 in my pocket. I had $5 in my pocket. I had to go to LA for a week. I didn't even have enough to, to have like a dollar menu a day. You know what I'm saying? So that's part of the shit I tell people because like people, a, a lot of people that I know, they wouldn't have sacrificed that. They would have been like, well, shit, I ain't even got no money, so I can't even make it. You know, my shit was totally opposite. <laughs> I was like, shit, I'm making it. <laughs> you feel me? I am going to LA 
And um, yeah, I went to LA and rehearsed for a week. And um, we did a show in Memphis. That's the history. Like I said, it was like uh, 2000, I want to say 18, 2018-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, there was a falling out with one person in the band, and she let all of us go because we all came in as a full band. But um, she hired a church nigga, <laughs> Jay Drew, and she hated it because it sounded like the Clark Sisters. And then she fired him, and then that's when I came back in the situation. No, they definitely sounded like... It was MD Faith, Clark yeah. at the time? Yeah, it sounded like Faith Clark Shear. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Yeah, my boy had that thing. It was smacking, but it was just like, you know, if you know Faith, then, you know, Faith on me. The argument that'll be on Facebook right now, that's exactly what they talk about, right? Church music is just how they just play. They don't really, you know, study the music, play the parts and the, and the songs and stuff like that. And that's a, that's a lot of times why they're not working. The, 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 the way they should, they think they should be working is because they're not, I mean, yeah. Niggas will play a, a video with with, uh, with a minute long chop and, 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 and then can't play parts. <laughs> can't play the pocket, you know? Well, pocket is trash. <clears throat> um, I approach all music now. Uh, I came in just being a drummer, but as time goes, everybody knows I'm a producer now. So I really approach the drums as a producer. You feel me? Like I literally dissect the drum parts. I play the drum parts the way they are. I might do fills here and there, but the main thing is always there. The main part of the song, the main pattern is always there. So that's really, to me, the main thing, you know, because niggas can do chops all day. Niggas can chop, 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 chop all day. But nine times out of ten, we just a sound check. Like, you didn't hear me just go for blood not one time. <laughs> you feel me? Like, you know, play the parts and, and, and work. Have longevity. Because at the end of the day, it's not our show. You know, it is the whoever, art, whatever artist we play with. It is their show. So, you know, let them do what they do. There is... There is artists, like, when I play for Tip, there's literally a part in the show that has never been rehearsed, that has never, ever been planned. Every part now, for the last 13, 14 years, Tip always jump on my, my, my drum riser, and and he just go, he tell me to go crazy. So if the artist's doing stuff like that, then that's something different versus you just going crazy all through her, or his or her set, you know what I'm saying? So performance drumming, I would say just, you know, Learn the parts, play the parts, and um, be tasty. Let's see it. I started. Um, I mean, I got pictures of me like with the, as a baby like one or two years old with the sticks or with the pots, pans, all of that. But as far as playing, my mom and dad had a quartet group and I actually start playing for their group at five years old. So that's when I actually start playing for their group. So I always, I always take it there. But if you go back to me being one years old, I got pictures of me with a pot on my head with two uh, spoons playing on another pot. And my mom said, that's what I used to do all the time. What would you say your like what would be your your goal for like culture house and those you know musicians and things that you're trying to work with and cultivate i want everybody in culture house to be um doing music at the highest level it really is, it's simple it ain't even no really long drawn out answer or nothing like that i just want all of us that's a part of culture house whether it be music fashion videography um uh, promotion uh Whatever it is that you're doing, I want it to be at the highest level. You feel me? That's that's really basically it.